Hi, and a very warm welcome to the latest of our driver chats. This one's got a slightly different slant. We've had a, a large number of mini e-racing driver interviews as part of that series. And we've also spoken to a number of real world drivers as part of their own initiative. And this is where really the two meet because it's my great pleasure to welcome the man who won the official mini challenge e-series, Dave Marshall. Dave, great to see you. How are you? Yeah, I'm keeping well. Very busy at the moment with prep towards the mini thing, but doing okay and getting through COVID, which is the main thing. So I've obviously spoken to a lot of the E-Series drivers, uh, as well as real world drivers. Uh, we spoke to you on the podium a lot during that eight week run, which was phenomenal. We didn't really get a chance to dig into your background, but I'm going to start with the main story, which of course, from my point of view, is the fact that you won the championship outright, and therefore you're going to be racing in the uh, Cooper class of the Mini Challenge uh, series. So it, you've had a few weeks, I guess it's sunk in. How, how does it feel? Uh, if I'm honest, it hasn't really sunk in. Uh, the, the pressure has been on to basically, the pressure was there from practicing week in, week out to try and win the actual thing. And then I thought, well, there might be sort of a week's cool down period where we can sort of let off the gas and stop practicing and have a bit of time to chill out. But since then, it's been preparation, sorting everything out to try and put towards the race. So uh, I can very quickly see how real life drivers have a full of this racing. So. Fair for it, the ones that work as well to try and try and fund the, their career. So, you've competed in a couple of scholarships before, and I know you've progressed very well in those. Tell, tell us about those and how you how you went about that, and how you enjoyed it, and how you did. Yeah, so I've I've done two scholarships in the past, um, both with uh, the first one I did had no track experience at all, never sat in a race car, uh, always dreamed of it, but I would probably say the excitement got was a bit getting in the car. Uh, and the first ever time I got in the car was actually with Max Coates, which is ironic, uh, round Croft. So, yeah, jumped jump in the car with him, uh, said had I any, had any background experience driving cars and on tracks and stuff. I said, I've only ever driven Croft on a simulator. Mm -hmm. uh, he was like, right, so we'll, we'll build it up steady and sure enough, came out the blocks and took the chicane flat first, first lap. <laughs> um, but the thing is, I paid good money to do the scholarship, so I wasn't going to hang around, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, basically got all the way through the final and um, did the same in the second scholarship that I did. Um, but unfortunately, both times were, were involved with drivers who had a lot more experience than me and, you know, fair play to them for winning it. Um, but yeah, the feedback I've had is, you know, I've got the speed, I've got the ability to jump in a car and do well. I just need a bit of seat time. Um, so the big, the big key at the moment is the, the preparation in, you know, my current road car, which is a, a Civic Type R, uh, the preparation's in in order for that now to, to get that ready for on track because obviously doing track days in a, in a Civic, you know, can cost you £200 a day, yeah. where I don't have the money to, to go and put two grand into a test day. So um, it's just trying to weigh out, weigh up, do I get seat time on the track that I will be racing, which is Croft, or do I try and get seat time in the current car that I will be racing in? Yeah, um, it'll be probably only a day's worth. So um, there's a there's a lot of preparation being going in to try and get this car ready and, and hopefully be on track for the start of September. That's good to hear. Taking a, a back step, your your what's your sporting prowess? So what what are the sports have you done? Because I, I think I remember reading your commentator sheet that you very kindly completed for us, and it alluded to the fact that you've you've done other sports and other things, and and you're one of those guys that seems to do everything well. So what's the background? I wouldn't say I do everything well. <laughs> um, yeah, so so basically, um, started mainly through college. Um, just got the, used to always mess around on bikes as a kid and go down the forest and build little jumps and stuff like that. But mainly in college, got properly into mountain bikes. Um, and it was just, if I'm honest, I found it a great way to get away from, I, I've been a musician from, you know, end of secondary school. Uh, so I had my circle of friends in the music group. Uh, but really wanted to just sort of find find my feet elsewhere as well. Uh, so managed to build a good friend group outside of that in mountain bikes. Uh, and that led on to us going into downhill and then went up Hampsley every now and again and then turned into going up every weekend, even through university when I probably should have been working. Uh, and then finished university in, because I enjoyed it that much and, you know, it didn't feel like a job at the time, but ended up helping as a volunteer up there building the bike tracks. Yeah. And turned into a full-time job. Um, so 
you know, working for the world champion downhill mountain biker was, you know, a fair step up. It's like going to work for Colin Turton or something like that in the in the sport he does. So, yeah, it was an amazing opportunity. And unfortunately, you know, we've we've just parted ways with that job at the moment, um, a bit through furlough and also taking another direction in sim coaching. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, you've got to take the take the chance while it's here and. Um, yeah, jumping in with both feet, essentially. <laughs> what, what got you into the, the sim racing? Uh, for what got us into sim racing? That, that was probably just a, a, a background in, in playing car games for fun. Yeah. Uh, always been competitive with my dad and my uncle on car games from very, very young age. Uh, on the Gran Turismo's and stuff and setting times and us trying to go on and beat each other. Uh, and then particularly through college, um, I was part of... Uh, Dirt 2, which I don't know whether people recognise Dirt 2, but essentially, unlike normal games now, um, it basically you were ranked on just how much you played the game. So I played that game like seriously a lot, uh, and built up a reputation for being one of the fastest on that game. And I was like, oh well, maybe it's not just a time thing. Maybe I'm actually okay at this. Uh, and then took part in a, a Forza Drift competition as well. Uh, and placed really quite highly in the drift competition. So that's where sort of the car feel came just through a steering wheel uh, rather than going in a car and feeling it through your bottom and stuff. Uh, just feeling the car's rotation stuff in the wheel is, is something that I developed f- through college, basically. Um, right. And then from an eSports point of view, that, that sort of developed through university. Um, so, yeah, quite early on, to be fair. <laughs> Certainly the sim experience for real world drivers now is, is very important and it seems to be getting more important as time goes on because you rarely come across, or me as a commentator, rarely come across a driver who isn't working out in the sim in between rounds, you know, for upcoming events. So the, the experience that you have is, is highly relevant. And I think that was recognised, wasn't it, by, by Anthony at the Team Mini in putting the challenge together during lockdown. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think probably simulators looked at it sort of just a bit of a toy really um you know but with covid and and a lot of the pros jumping on from real racing onto the sim they've seen how beneficial it can be as a good training mechanism uh whether that's learning on the track or you know practicing a different car discipline or or things like that they've really seen the potential in it um so during the mini you know i was relatively unknown regarding looking at the grid compared to real drivers uh, but I think it was probably by the second or third round I'd sort of made a fair good dent in the championship. Yeah. Uh, and people sort of saw the pace I was on. And I think by the end, I must have had about six or seven of the real drivers that I was actually coaching. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, I was definitely, you know, I looked at as being a person that can help the real drivers, even though, granted, they, you know, put them in a real car and they could run rings around me. Um, chuck, chuck me on the sim and you know, they, they learn things from me. I'm not teaching them their discipline. It's just ways on a sim that they can come on and maybe go faster. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a really good experience to, to work with the real drivers and, you know, prove myself as a bit of a coach as well. Uh, tell us a little bit, bit about the relationship, hopefully developing with Anthony Williams and, and the uh, Mini Challenge people. Yeah, so obviously I taught Anthony during the Mini Challenge. Um, yeah, th- things are going well. We we're putting things in place, and it was it was just waiting to find out which round was a was a definite go, really. So I only heard on that on uh, Friday gone. I knew obviously I was going to be racing, yeah. Uh, but the Croft the Croft one stood out obviously because it's on the talker package, yeah. Um, and also also it's just about an hour down the road, which you know for up north there's not many other race tracks very near, so. Uh, that was a, it was a nice one for me, especially if I want to get a bit more track experience. Um, but yeah, we've, we've worked well. We're putting a package in place and we'll see how things go to see whether it's going to be possible to do the, the following season. Um, but yeah, great guy. Looking forward to working with him for, for sure. We're looking forward to seeing you out on track. You know, from our point of view, it's a, it's a good story. Uh, for the ITV cameras that are going to be there as well. I know the Mini Challenge has got some touring car rounds and some non-touring car rounds, so to, to get on to. Uh, what is one, one of the best supported rounds when, when we're allowed spectators? You know, the, the crowd at Croft is usually huge and it's one of the most knowledgeable crowds that we get of, of the year. So uh, even if they're not there, then they'll be there in spirit watching on TV for sure. 
Yeah, I mean, to be fair, you're saying about the crowd, and I'm sure it's an amazing experience to be there with a full crowd and everything, but I think just the chance to actually jump into a racing seat and enter a, a grid, I believe, uh, 28 cars at the moment, yeah. that's yeah. signed to do it. Um, I think my attention will be solely on just trying to do the race and do as well as I can. Um, so, you know, I don't know any different than not racing in front of a crowd. So I'm just looking forward to getting in it and giving it everything, to be honest. So, Who's, Whose car are you having, do you know, and uh, who's prepping it and anybody coaching you on track? Is Max still doing some coaching with you? Or? Yeah, so it's, it's through Accelerate Motorsport, um, through Anthony and his wife. Um, yeah, as far, as far as I know, Max is going to do a bit to help us. I'm obviously good mates with Alex Toth Jones as well. Yeah. Uh, like, to be fair, after doing the mini challenge, uh, eSports, like everyone's just jumped on and said, listen, we're, we're prepared to look at data and help you in the car. Yeah. Uh, whether that's jumping into the, into the mini with us or jumping in my track car to teach us line choice and how to improve being smoother in the car and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I've helped them out in the eSports and some of it was financial, I'll be honest. Some of yeah. it was, you know, I've done you a favour and it, it's all about being in the click and, and working with people, so... Um, it, it's definitely helped us to make them contacts during the esports. Definitely, Dave. I guess it's part of your preparation. You, you've got to do your arts test. I'm assuming you haven't got an arts test yet. So is, is that booked? Yeah, no, no ra race license as of yet. Um, I probably left it a little bit late to be fair, but obviously I only won the championship a month or so ago. Um, so I managed to get my Motorsport UK packed through. That came maybe two weeks ago, yeah. um, and I, I've rang round and through through Alex Toth Jones. Uh, managed to get my arts test booked in at Mallory Park. So a big thank you to, to Pete down at Mallory Park for booking us in as early as this, uh, yeah. 20th of August, because everyone else was the end of September, which is obviously wow. very fine for a race at the beginning of October. Um, so, yeah, big thanks to them, and, and, and hopefully we'll pass it, and there's another tick, bo um, tick cross off the list. And I'm guessing, you, I, I don't know again, have you, have you got your own kit, so you'll need boots... Yeah, you know, racing suit, crash helmet. Have you got all that, or is that something else you've got to you've got to find? Yeah. So, so luckily, to be fair, even off scholarships, I've I've never took safety with with uh, any sort of complacency. Um, so I bought a helmet and a hands device when I even did the scholarships, even though I know it was probably a little bit overkill. But you never plan on having an accident, do you? So uh, that's the way I look at it. Um, as part of the mini package, there was gloves and boots done by HRX. Right. Uh, which was very, very kind of them. But to be fair, I already had gloves and boots. Uh, so I rang up Callum at HRX. And to be fair, they've been one of the, by far the best companies to deal with regarding picking up the Ford and sorting deals out. Uh, and they've managed to basically reduce the cost of the suit by the value of what the boots and the gloves were. Oh, uh, great. So that's helped me massively, especially with, with budget being as tight as what it is. So uh, big up to Callum and thanks, thanks HRX. Uh, in the meantime, you're still doing some, some e-racing. Uh, I saw you're racing in an e-racing touring car. What's the spec like and does it differ much from the minis? Uh, to be fair, the competition is just as brutal. Um, you know, it's a case you run wide in one corner and you expect to get past. Um, but unfortunately, I've got a lot of ballast from the first round of touring cars. Right. Uh, so basically from the first round I've had for the following seven rounds, at least 130 kilogram the majority of the time 150 kilograms so i'm not lapping my usual lap times or being near the front of the grid which is a bit of a shame um worked very very hard towards the touring cars to i think i managed to get 10 sponsors on board to help us uh in the touring cars um yeah. which all the sponsors during the, the current climate wasn't fair to look for financial gain yeah uh, but they have helped us no end to try and get my track car ready for training in the mini, oh, so the likes of SW Motorsports uh, fitting a free roll cage for me, which huge thanks to them, uh, and many other people's, you know, jumped on board and helped us get the car ready. So, um, a bit of a shame not to do it justice and put it on the front grid, but it's just not realistic with the current weight. So, um, mm. yeah, still very fun and it, it keeps my keeps my hand in sim racing. So. Oh, that's good to hear. Dave, um, congratulations on winning the E-Series and thank you for entertaining us over that eight, eight weeks. 
you know, the sim races and the real world races put on such a show over that, those eight weeks. It gave us all something to look forward to. And I think there might be a winter series that Anthony wants to run as well, which would, would be mega. So thank you for that. Well done on winning it. And really look forward to seeing you on the grid at Croft. Yeah. Cheers, Richard. Hopefully see you there. And thanks for joining us on, on camera today. Thanks a lot. Dave Marshall. Take care. Cheers, Richard. Bye-bye.